Archean Eon, the earlier of the two formal divisions of Precambrian time, about 4.6 billion to 541 million years ago, and the period when life first formed on Earth. The Archean Eon began about 4 billion years ago with the formation of Earth's crust and is named after the Greek word for beginning. The Archean is divided into four eras. The first one is Eoarchean. Objects were chaotically flying around at the start of the solar system, building the planets and moons. There is evidence that after the planets formed, about 4.1 to 3.8 billion years ago, a second large spike of asteroid and comet impacted the Earth and Moon in an event called Late Heavy Bombardment. Meteorites and comets in stable or semi-stable orbits became unstable and started impacting objects throughout the solar system. In addition, this event is called the Lunar Cataclysm because most of the Moon's craters are from this event. Earth has its first oceans. The Earth began cooling in the Archean Eon, and because it was cool enough, water could finally condense to form its first oceans. This was in large part because the Moon stabilized Earth's climate, giving it seasons. Remember that heat flow was intense in the Hadean Eon. Because of the high temperatures, any water on the planet would have evaporated into space. Also in the heavy bombardment stage, this is when scientists believe comets transported water to Earth. The alternate theory for the origin of water is that it existed all along in rocks inside the crust. Because Earth's interior contains minerals with hydrogen and oxygen, volcanoes continually degassed, releasing H2O as water vapor. Now that the Earth's climate stabilized, water no longer evaporated from extreme temperatures. Finally, water condensed, then oceans remained. And because Earth had oceans, this is where life began, about 3.5 billion years ago. Origin of the continents? In order for plate tectonics to work as it does currently, it necessarily must have continents. Volcanic action must have brought the first continental material to the Earth's surface in the Hadean Eon, 4.4 billion years ago. The first solid evidence of modern plate tectonics is found at the end of the Archean, indicating at least some continental lithosphere must have been in place. This evidence does not necessarily mark the starting point of plate tectonics. Remnants of earlier tectonic activity could have been erased by the rock cycle. The stable interiors of the current continents are called cratons and were mostly formed in the Archean Eon. A craton has two main parts, the shield, which is crystalline basement rock near the surface, and the platform made of sedimentary rocks covering the shield. On the surface, temperatures were not very different from current levels because according to astronomers, the sun was about one third less hot than it is today. Few rocks formed during this eon still exist due to the major transformations the Earth's crust has undergone since then, primarily driven by intense volcanic activity, which is a defining feature of this period. Scientists believe this volcanic activity was responsible for the deposition of igneous and sedimentary rocks in the Earth's crust. This same volcanic activity also prevented the preservation of fossils. There are no definitive answers yet when the first supercontinent emerged. There is evidence the first cratons are now located in Western Australia and South Africa. This crust from the supercontinent Valbara dates back 2.7 to 3.6 billion years ago. This resonates with the fact that Earth's crust was cooling in the Archean Eon. This cooler climate allowed the formation of continents because the lithosphere became more stable. Oxygen begins to fill the atmosphere. At the start of the Archean Eon, Earth was without free oxygen. Water molecules had oxygen, but they were bonded with hydrogen. In this eon, Earth's atmosphere was mostly methane and nitrogen. The only life forms that could exist were anaerobic cyanobacteria. In the absence of oxygen, these microscopic cyanobacteria converted sunlight to energy. They carried out photosynthesis in the oceans metabolizing their own food. As a waste product, cyanobacteria released oxygen. Over time, free oxygen built up in the oceans into banded iron formations. But oxygen poisoned cyanobacteria, threatening their very own existence. As oxygen filled the oceans, it mixed with iron. Iron rusts when it reacts with oxygen. So over time, the seafloor collected rusted iron. Most of the world's iron ore deposits were produced in the Archean Eon. We can find banded iron formations all over the world, such as Australia, Canada, and Russia, Carbon dioxide emissions are abundant from modern volcanoes, and it is assumed that the intense volcanism during the Archean Eon caused this gas to be highly concentrated in the atmosphere. 
This high concentration most likely gave rise to an atmospheric greenhouse effect that warmed Earth's surface sufficiently to prevent the development of glaciations. The CO2 content in the atmosphere has decreased over geological time because much of the oxygen formerly bound in CO2 has been released to provide increasing amounts of O2 to the atmosphere. In contrast, carbon has been removed from the atmosphere via the burial of organic sediments. Oxygen continued to form rusted iron in the oceans. Because there was no more iron to rust in the oceans, oxygen entered the atmosphere. This event is the Great Oxygenation Event, when the atmosphere first became oxygenated. And also, at the end of this era, Mesoarchean era, the supercontinent Valbara start to break up. Tectonic consolidation and the rise of oxygenic life in the late Archean. The period being defined chronometrically and not reference to a specific level in a rock section on Earth. Oxygenic photosynthesis first evolved in this era and was accountable for the oxygen catastrophe, which was to happen later in the Paleoproterozoic from a poisonous buildup of oxygen in the atmosphere, produced by these oxygen-producing photoautotrophs, which evolved earlier in the Neoarchean. A huge pulse in the formation of island arcs and oceanic plateaus took place worldwide from 2.9 to 2.7 billion years ago. By the time of the Archean Proterozoic boundary, about 2.5 billion years ago, many small cratons dominated by island arcs had coalesced into one large landmass, or supercontinent, that some scholars refer to as Kenorland. So to finish this video, here are some of the main characteristics of this period. Constant volcanic eruptions, significant changes in the Earth's crust, presence of minerals such as limestone and graphite, formation of the Earth's oldest soils, formation of the Earth's first continents, intense geological activity. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you liked. Thanks for watching this far. See you next time.